Good morning, everyone, or Hello. afternoon, I guess, mm, depending true. on where you're at. Welcome to the barista or bartender, Why Choose? An exploration of spirits and coffee. They're one and the same. They're very similar, but really, really different. True. Actually. <laughs> and combining them is not always straightforward. It is not. No. We're so excited that you all joined us today. And so we just want to take a few seconds and let everyone kind of get settled in, logged in, all of the things that are going to happen. And so while we're doing that, I would love it if you wanted to put in the chat just where are you joining us from today? We and want to know. And also, if you're drinking a coffee or beverage, put that in too. Yes. I just added that just now. But I love to hear what you all are drinking and experiencing at home. So go ahead and put that in the chat. Um, yeah. Introduce yourself. Who am I? Who are you? Well, first we have a couple of people joining us. Barry from LA, Ephany from Southern Illinois, Jose from Mexico City, amazing. Aaron from Colorado, Olivia from Kansas City, Christy from Redondo Beach. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Super fun. It's a Welcome. good mix. Cool. So thanks so much for joining us. I'm Andrea Allen. I'm the co-founder of Onyx Coffee Lab. And I know you all were seeing this little <clears throat> bio of me while you're waiting to true. get in. So I'll just throw in a few fun facts that weren't in there. Oh, love it. I love riding horses, yeah, that's which right. is great. I've got two daughters at home. And I also really love wine and cocktails. Surprise. That's a little bit about me. We're shocked. <laughs> Everyone's surprised. Uh, my name is Matt, so I'm the product expert uh, at Breville. I look after all of our coffee stuff here in the US. And ooh, a little blurb about me, I'm also a dad. So I have awesome. also two children. Um, I can't remember the last time I rode a horse, but it sounds fun. Come to Arkansas <laughs> and we'll, we'll figure it How out. How often do you ride horses? Four times a week. Really? Yeah. That's been, have you gotten your kids on one? I have, yeah. That sounds really cool. It's pretty great. Amazing. <laughs> I could actually talk about that all day long. But I bet you could. That'll yeah. be your next master class. It's my next master class. <laughs> Coffee and horses. <laughs> Let's just do a little bit of housekeeping. So mm -hmm. today we want to interact with you. So if you have a question for us, just put it in the chat, either on YouTube or Zoom. We would yep. love to just interact with you, hear your questions and your thoughts on what we're doing. Um, and then if you're on Zoom, you can also raise your hand and we'll bring you on the screen. I really want some people to come onto the screen. Yes. So please, please, please Bonus points if you have if you a to. guest appearance in yes. the background. Yeah. And so the other big news for the day is that we're going to be giving away a Barista Express Impress machine to someone that is joining us today. Um, this is the new machine in the Breville lineup. Whoa, whoa. And so hang in there. We're going to do it at the very end of our time together. Mm -hmm. We're super excited. Very exciting. All right. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do this. Okay. So we're just going to spend a few minutes talking briefly about espresso. So there is so much to know about espresso. And I just love to review the basics um, every time we get together like this, just because I really feel like it's so complicated to make espresso, but can it be. also can be so straightforward. So if you're someone that is like, I just don't want it to be complicated, it doesn't have to be. Oh. So I always just say that great espresso is what tastes great to you. Isn't that sweet? I, it's I a love heartwarming, that, you know? it's just a heartwarming feeling. <laughs> um, so first off, like, what is actually espresso? Espresso is essentially a brew method that you use to make coffee. So it's just any coffee you want, ground, fine, brewed, using an espresso machine that essentially produces nine bars of fresher and it yeah. ends up being like a concentrated cup of coffee. Yeah. So, yeah, so there's there's a lot of things to think about here and I just wanna break it down because what, what I really wanna do is spend time making coffee cocktails. That's why espresso. we're all here today. Yeah, that's why we're here today. <laughs> So let's just go over a few basics. So I like to encourage everyone to prepare your espresso the same way every time so that the only variable that affects your brew time and the, also the flavor of your espresso is your grind size. Yes. So when I say flavor of espresso, espresso basically has three flavor components that we're working with when we're talking about brewing espresso and extraction. You've got the sour, the sweet, and the bitter. The sour comes from the beginning of the shot. The sweetness comes from the middle. The bitterness comes from the end. And so <coughs> essentially how this is gonna function is that the um, finer your coffee is ground, the harder the water has to work to get 
through it, the longer brew time, the more bitter side you're going to be on. Whereas on the other side, the more coarse your coffee is ground, the easier the water it has <laughs> coming through the grounds, the quicker it is to, for it to brew, and the more sour it is. So there's just sort of this straight line that goes across the brew time that is going to hit you into these different flavor components. And so really the only way to know like where your coffee is at is simply to just pull a shot. Um, so Kellen has a question. Thank you so much for joining us. This is great. Um, and they're asking about whether there are particular origins that pair best or better with certain liquors. So we, we're going to actually talk about that here in a little bit in great terms question. of like layering up um, flavor characteristics from actual coffees and espressos with spirits. Yeah. So we'll get there soon. Just this hang is also in. a really great hang opportunity to just say because espresso is the brew method, you can feel free to like play around with literally any coffee. Any coffee. As espresso. Any you're coffee not, as you're espresso. Not, you're not limited to only espresso blends or espresso roasts. This is true. Yeah. Okay, so let's jump in. We're going to brew our first shot of espresso so we can get to making our first drink. Ta -da. Um, so the first kind of step in making espresso is just to clean out your uh, pour to filter basket, which is just the yes, brew basket right here, so that there's no oil or coffee. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <laughs> We were joking earlier about every time somebody dropped something that they had to that's, take a that's shot. That's when it's time to start drinking. Yeah, yeah. We, we're not going <laughs> to do it right now. But okay, so the porta filter is clean, and we're going to go, go ahead and insert and and grind. And so this is brings us to one of the places that I get asked a lot of questions about, and that place is how much coffee do I put in my porta filter? So basically, that just puts us straight into talking about recipes. Um, and so recipes, this particular machine has a 16, 17, 18 gram basket range. Correct. And so as soon as I throw that out, you might be thinking like, I have a scale at home or I don't have a scale at home. And the main thought process here is just that your porta filter basket is full. But one of the really great things that the Barista Express Impress Express does. Impress. Uh, <laughs> is it helps you navigate how much coffee is in your porta filter and that yeah. is really cool because it takes one element out of your purview for like trying to figure out exactly what you're doing and i think that's actually one of the really great things about this particular machine correct there's lots of things to think about there's a lot of things to think about so we'll show everybody this so that you can see and this is approximately 17 grams of espresso in here so if you're using a scale, go for it. I think it's great. If you're not, no worries. Okay. Okay. So it's ready to go. It's tamped. We've got a question from Edwin asking about dark or medium espresso beans mm. um, to use for espresso. Well, first off, what are we using today? So what we're using today is Geometry Coffee from Onyx. Um, and this coffee is more in the light to medium range yeah. of development for roasting. Um, and it has lots of nice berry floral flavors, which are going to go really well with the gin and tonic that we're about to make. But really, Edwin, it's your preference. It's whatever kinds of coffees you like to drink. Traditionally, coffee espresso is brewed with, with the darker roasted coffee, but really yeah. the specialty coffee movement has sort of changed that thought process and just sort of gotten it down to a spot where we really are thinking about espresso as a brew method and for you to be bringing like the your own kind of like personal preferences and desires for flavor to to the space which is yeah. super cool okay so we just got our shot here our first shot you can see the crema is great mm -hmm. and we basically brewed just under an ounce on each side so it's a double shot um, and I, for this coffee, I really like for it to come out in around 25 seconds. Um, and basically we're just going to like settle these down into an ice bath because I really want the, the shots to just be a little cooler once we start making our, um, making our <coughs> beverage. Okay. We got another question from Myra. So she's asking about heating the portafilter first. Yeah. I, love this question because <laughs> I think that again one of the really fun things that has been happening in coffee is just that some of these really rigid rules that we have thought about 
that are like absolutely essential to making espresso yeah. have sort of started to change over time. Thank and goodness. this actually is one of them. So mm -hmm. preheating your portafilter is, is traditionally a yes, but in recent times, a lot of people are experimenting with freezing portafilters, with just having them at room temperature. So I would just say it's not super important to do it first. Yeah. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. It, will ch it could yeah. change things, but there's not <laughs> one right way to do it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what we're gonna say for now about espresso. And I know a lot of you have tons of espresso questions and we're really hoping that- Keep them coming. Yeah, keep them coming. And we're really wanting to do just like a deep dive on espresso the whole time, That's nerding right. out, doing all the things. We can't avoid it. We can't avoid There's it. There's rabbit holes everywhere yeah. and I just keep falling into them. <laughs> okay, we've got another question um, about noticing that the darker the coffee, the less fine that you grind. Is there any validity to that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say absolutely. So when you take a coffee bean into a higher developed stage in the roaster, meaning it's darker, Basically, the, there's just less dense particles happening in the coffee itself. So then right. when you actually grind it, there is just, the density of it is just lower. Meaning the solubility is going to be much higher. It's going to brew a lot quicker. So you are right that that, I think, is definitely the case. But I think it's difficult to apply those kinds of thought process just across the board <coughs> because coffee is, as I love I to say, it's a wild animal. It does not always <laughs> follow the rules. No. Which I think is one of the reasons that I'm in the coffee industry. Because I also don't always follow the rules. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got another question. Um, someone just got surprised with this machine. Wow, that's a pretty awesome. awesome one. Okay, and so you've been trying to dial in the machine. You had a hard time getting a good shot with the Starbucks beans. Mm. The internal grinder is on five and the grind size is on 12. So I think trouble getting a good shot, meaning it doesn't brew properly or it doesn't taste proper. Here, here is something I'm just gonna put out there is that if you're not getting a good shot, either the way it's brewing and the way it looks or the way it tastes, I think the number one thing, and you're playing around with grind size and you feel like you're making progress on that, my number one suggestion is to change the beans that you're using. So right. uh, once coffee starts to get older, like more than a couple of months old, it is going to lose its potential. Yeah. So that doesn't mean that it's not still okay. That doesn't mean that it's not still like usable. But I think that if you're having a hard time getting coffee, getting your coffee tasting good, that, that and you feel like you're doing the basics of preparation, I would suggest trying to change coffee beans. Yeah, and look for something that has a roast date on it. Look for something that has a roast date on it. Yeah. I, I always encourage people to think about buying local. So if you have a local cafe or a roastery, I think that is a really great place to buy coffee. Um, or if you are ordering in to be looking at places and roasters that have information about the coffee. That's my main, that's like my the number one. The more information, one, the better. My number one thing is just like, Finding a roaster that gives you the roast date, gives you a recipe, like kind of gives you flavor notes, gives you yeah. some information on the coffee. I think for me, it's more of a sign of intentionality in the process of coffee. Right. And for me, that just means that the odds are your coffee is gonna be better. I mean, the yeah. more time someone spends on these kinds of things, typically the better they are. So yeah. that's, that's really what I wanna encourage everyone to do. And before we, I mean, we could talk about this all day but mm -hmm. we do want to make some beverages. But I do think that coffee is just unique in that it's such a big part of the process and being yes. that it's an ingredient that still has to be processed by us. Yes. To where you can buy a great bottle of wine and not worry about it, but we really do need to keep focus on the ingredient itself before we start focusing on the process. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Great All question. Right. We're gonna jump into making this first drink. Yeah, we still have more questions, but we'll, we're gonna go yeah, back and we'll forth. Come back, we'll come back to we'll some of your questions. We'll try to make sure everyone gets taken care of. <laughs> All right. These espresso shots are perfect temp at this point. Perfectly temp. Okay, awesome. So the first drink we're making today is the espresso gin and tonic. So I Classics. personally love gin and tonics, and I think adding coffee into um, into a cocktail is can be really really challenging. 
Um, and for me, I really just, I hate to say this, I don't like Do espresso you? martinis. <laughs> I don't like them. And I think that it's okay for me to not like them, but I think what, for me, what happens is that is almost always the only coffee cocktail on menus that I see. And yeah, so what I feel, yeah, it's actually unfair. <laughs> and what I feel like that does is it gives an interesting message about about how coffee is made and how it is used as an ingredient in the cocktail world. Mm -hmm. So the main, one of the main like vibes about espresso martinis is this like really heavy, sweet chocolate thing <laughs> that gets yeah. put in to tie everything together. So right. the chocolate is the thing that bridges the spirit and, and the coffee itself. Um, but it also masks things like coffee quality, espresso yeah. preparation techniques. Like it's just kind of a way for them to be like, okay, coffee and the spirit don't taste that great together. Just put a bunch of chocolate on it and now yep. it's okay. And so I just feel like I want to dispel that. It's a disservice to the potential of coffee. It's a disservice to the potential of the like beautiful crossover between cocktails and coffee. And yeah. so that's basically what we're doing today is exploring it. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. There ain't there ain't a drop of chocolate in any of these drinks. Just putting that out there. <laughs> so the gin and tonic. It's a really great drink. The traditional build is tonic water, gin, and then splash of lime, right? Yeah. Um, and so basically what I wanted to play with today is tying together a really great aspect of this particular coffee, which is floral, mm. floral components. So this particular coffee has a really beautiful note of honeysuckle. And so what I was thinking is like, what if we could take the florality of the coffee and also the botanical nature of a gin and just tie them together as the flavor profile that makes the drink feel balanced. That sounds perfect. Everybody knows I love balance. I mean, everybody <laughs> loves balance, right? And so when you're thinking about what builds a balanced drink, it's just like lots of, you know, you're gonna need sweetness, you need bitterness, you need some acidity, and then you just need to have like a common thread tying all these things together. Yeah, I mean, you said that that's what makes a good shot of espresso, and that's what makes a great cocktail too. It is, it's, it's, the, same, it's the same sort of principle. Cool. So let's go ahead and start building this drink. And I'm gonna start by putting in an ice cube. I'm a big fan of these really big ice cubes. Mm. I feel like that, just like the intentional nature of coffee, it's really great to have something really beautiful that kind of stands out that helps tie the drink together visually. So, speaking of visuals, wow. that already looks just it so looks good. It looks so good. And yeah, and beautiful so, ice. I mean, it is, I think it's like pretty undeniable that what you see with your eyes like really informs your expectations about what you're gonna experience yeah. and what you're gonna taste. And yeah. it just like really helps to <clears throat> elevate anything that you're doing. And so especially in the food and beverage space, I just think that visuals are super, super important. And so for me in all of these drinks, the ice is something that helps, helps elevate it. Yeah, okay. not to mention it is water, which is a key ingredient in most cocktails also. Can I get you to open this? Please? You sure can. This is the least, literally the least I can do for you. <laughs> I, I, until I make it. <laughs> no. I, it was, look, I'm also here to create chaos. I think I think it's great. I no, I think it's great because I think we're both we're both beverage professionals, and sometimes things happen. <laughs> and it's all good. All right. So we're very gracious about it. I'm gonna build this in this cup. So I'm gonna pour in approximately four ounces of tonic water. So Noting tonic, the approximate. I approximate. love the fact that you go approximate because I, there's time for like complete accuracy and kind of obsessing over it. And then there's also times to just <laughs> let it be. <laughs> I don't want this to feel weird to you, but I feel so confident that that would be four ounces I've, if, if we listen, measured it out. Of all the people who are probably really good at eyeballing. I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like, I'm not gonna prove it right now, but I'm overly confident. All right, so tonic water is just basically carbonated water that has quinine, and sugar in it. And so yeah. it's gonna add bitterness, the fizz, and some sweetness to the drink. Yeah. All right, next we're gonna put in an ounce of botanical gin. 
And again, the reason I'm using this style of gin is because I really want to capitalize on the opportunity for um, the floral nature of the coffee being highlighted. Yeah. So I'm just gonna put that in. One thing too is that when you, anytime you add espresso into, into a cocktail, it just has the potential to become overly bitter. Um, and so the yeah. espresso is gonna play as a bittering agent in this drink, um, but I want to also help like up the sweetness a little bit. And so I'm actually gonna add a little bit of orange juice to this as well. That's that key balance right there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got the orange juice. And then I'm gonna add also an ounce of lime juice. Okay, so now what we've got here is just kind of my basic version of a gin and tonic. I'm gonna go ahead and stir it because I kind of want this to just be the base on which we're building the drop-in of the espresso. So you could stop here and this has got, I mean this clearly has quite a bit of fruit juice in it and, and again part of that is about filling the drink, building the drink so that the espresso is tied together in a harmonious balance. Yeah. Okay, so then finally what we're gonna do is we're gonna layer in the espresso. And so for me, I really want to always create visually beautiful drinks. And so I want to try to stay away from the fact that coffee is brown. It just is. Um, and so basically what I'm gonna do is try to float the espresso on top of mm. this drink meaning that I kind of want it to hang in the top so that it has like a really nice layer of this like lime kind of color going on with the espresso in the top. And then I would want to like try to serve it like that. Yeah. Um, when you start to drink it and it's floated on top, you can, um, I like to drink it separate to start with just because it's really kind of an interesting experience where like you take a little sip from one side and mm. it's like got this really nice, leading kind of lime vibe going on it and then you can take a sip from the other side and you really get to experience the coffee. Um, and so here's the trick to layering and to floating espresso on top of this is basically I'm just going to use a spoon and I'm going to hold the spoon like really close to the surface of the of the cocktail and I'm going to very slowly pour the espresso in because what I really want to do is just like softly put it in and let it float on the top. Okay. All right, we're just gonna pray <laughs> that it floats. And this is a technique used in a lot of different cocktails. Whether you're floating like some sort of fortified wine on top of a cocktail or anything really. Awesome. But the idea of being able to create a layered drinking experience is a really fun thing to play around with. Right, and yeah. so you can see I've got a little bit going down there in the bottom. But if you kind of check it out on this side, you can see there's like just sort of some like dynamic colors going on, which is really kind of what I'm what I'm aiming for. And then I'm just gonna garnish with a little bit of lime. Beautiful. Very nice. Very simple. Yeah, it's so easy, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you only used half of the shot, so you could easily make two of these for a guest if yep. you wanted to. Like. I ended up only adding forward. half of the shot. So in the recipe, True. it says one. It says one espresso shot. And so for me, it's like I'm really aiming for that visual. And then also, it's like, you know, depending on how coffee heavy you want it to be. Um, so this particular recipe is built really for balance. Um, yeah. And so if you want it to be a little more boozy, go for it. If you want it to be more coffee forward, go for it. So it's just kind of like this is a great base on which to build drinks. Um, I also think this is a super friendly drink for a holiday gathering because you can serve it without coffee, it's a gin and tonic. You can actually serve it without gin and it's an espresso tonic. So right. you can kind of like play around in the yeah. space and have some like different drinks that might meet what different folks are looking for, but also it's the same, like it's all the same ingredients. That's an actual crowd pleaser. It's a pretty great crowd, crowd pleaser, and I'm, yeah. all, I'm all about that, especially mm -hmm. as we're like coming up into the holiday season. Yeah. You might be making cocktails for family. Okay, nice. so I wanna pop over. I know we have a bunch of questions going yeah. on. Thank you so much. Okay, so the first question, what is one coffee and cocktail myth that you wish people would learn to let go that might be holding back the quality of their drink? Wow, that's like the best question ever. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna To choose like, one is hard. Yeah. Um, 
I think that one of, okay, here's, here's what I'm going to throw out there is that there are a lot of products out there that are made for cocktail making that I don't think that you need. Mm. So mixes, sweeteners, even liqueurs that are like sweetened and infused. So I've had this experience with something like um, the Mr. Black coffee liqueur, right. which I actually think is a really great product. So I don't want you hearing me say that. But I've kind of explored some coffee cocktail recipes, both for fun, but also like kind of for this space. And I see that they don't actually have coffee in them. They have a coffee liqueur in them. And so what I want to challenge you with is when you see those kinds of things, you should think like what actually makes the liqueur, what actually makes it? Yeah. So it's like coffee, there's a sweetener, there's, there's a spirit. And how can you create that using just ingredients instead of a product? Yeah. Um, and I'm saying that, of course, not to throw a shade on a particular product, but I actually think it's the same in like the margarita space. There is like... Uh, pre -mixes margarita like versus, yeah, mixes totally. or there's the like um orange liqueur that you use in that like oh. and those are things that i think are like for me i just want to encourage you just if you are into that orange vibe just put a little bit of orange juice in it and see what happens yeah. so i think for me that's one of the things that i like to explore in cocktails yeah which essentially actually decomplicates things mm -hmm. when you try to think that in order to make something you're required to use a certain ingredient whereas right. those ingredients are like you said just comprised of other individual components that you yourself could easily throw together absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. and then you have way more freedom too that's true instead of buying one liqueur for something specific yeah if you're like me you have a spirit cabinet that has a couple of things like like gin or tequila that you kind of use regularly or you know every once in a while <laughs> um and then you have this random like spirit that you bought for one particular yeah. cocktail yeah. and then you weren't super into it and then it's just there yeah. and i think that fits exactly what you're saying it's yeah. like just work think about like how can you build that together in your mind yeah all right let's answer some more questions so katie has a question about using coffee or espresso infused ice cubes <clears throat> i love infused ice cubes Ice yeah. cubes. One of my favorite drinks that I've ever done is basically was like a, a cold brew style drink that was served over an ice cube that was about the size. It was a two by two and it, the ice cube was just frozen strawberries. So I just like blended up a bunch of strawberries and put some like just simple syrup in it and kind of made a puree and then froze them and then had that and the cold brew and as it melted, just I mean, it was just like, it. Yeah. It was, it was that's, so good. That's cool. So I do think that using using your ice to put to put things in is fun. It can make it really yeah. visual appealing. Yeah. Um, it also changes the drinking experience over time. Drinking experience. That's the name of the game. The drinking experience. Yeah. So I think that I think you can absolutely do that. Um, we've got a question too about clear ice cubes. This is actually something that we were discussing <laughs> a little bit yesterday. Yeah. So I'll just throw out a couple of techniques. Um, one technique is to use filtered water. So just something that is going to taste good as it melts. Yeah. Um, but really the, the key to making crystal clear ice cubes is getting them really, really cold in an airtight container. Yeah. So you want to make sure that like when you're getting them frozen, your ice tray has a lid and then you put them in and you get them super cold. Yeah. You're yeah. just trying to remove as much oxygen as possible. Yeah. Yeah. It's a question about whether you can use seltzer water instead of tonic water. You could. That becomes a different flavor experience. So if you're gonna if you're gonna move that way, you're gonna want to think about additions of sweetness and additions of bitter to like make a round flavor experience. But if that's yeah. what you have, you can absolutely do that. Yeah, I was gonna say I've actually done that and then just added like a dash of Angostura bitters with some simple syrup to yeah. kind of create that same balance. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, someone's just asking about the actual build. So Emma's asking, they usually add the sparkling water after they add all the other ingredients. I, I feel like I should have a really strong opinion about this, but I don't. <laughs> um, I built it this way, and I would build it this way at my house because of yeah. the way it looks. I think that there is this experience about expectation, and then as you build it, what it looks like. So yeah. for me, I'd like to do it like this, but I don't think 
for this particular build that there is a huge necessity for that. Yeah. I think that's one of those things where you could play around with it to see if it made a big difference. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, Rohit is asking about discussing differences we've seen in cold brew versus heat extracted coffee. This is this is just a whole a whole <laughs> subthread about which coffee is better. So I do think that using cold cold brew just has a completely different flavor body behavior profile than hot coffee does. Totally. It just is completely You're unlocking different, different flavor thing. compounds. So I would just say if you really love cold brew, that I think you can use cold brew in cocktails. And I, I actually think it's like technically, I would say easier to use cold brew because it's cold. So yeah. you don't have to chill it and things like that. Yeah. But what you lose is some of those more delicate citric style acidities I think you lose some of the floral from the coffee. Definitely. Some of this just goes back to how the coffee is brewed. So when you brew with cold water, you just don't have as much opportunity for extracting those more delicate acidities. It's it's very high, it's way less acidity in a cold brew than it is in a hot espresso or even yeah. in a hot coffee. So some of it depends on like, what are you <clears throat> wanting the coffee to bring to the experience? Yeah. And can we just dispel a myth there that when we say acidity, we're talking about the perceived acidity? Yes. So if you are one of those people who thinks that you have a sensitivity to acid, just know that we're more so talking about the difference between a Red Delicious and a Granny Smith apple than actually changing any pH levels here. <laughs> Don't miss out. That's uh, just what I want to tell I've been, you. I've been waiting for you <laughs> to uh, give the green light on that Don't one. Don't miss out. Mm-hmm. I would even like hazard to say as well that this particular drink, I don't think you have to be super into espresso to enjoy it. Um, for me, it doesn't like point. scream espresso. And even when you're having those experiences with espresso martinis, they've got, That's they always have that like real specific deep bitterness going on in them. This, this does not have that <clears throat> at all. So yeah. Yeah. That's nice. The, Fun. the lime and the aftertaste, I'm a big fan of. That's really good. Yeah. All right. I know we have a few more questions. And so I just want to make sure that we get to the next drink because it is equally tasty. Um, but the last I don't question. Think it's better. Yeah. The last question is just about using espresso <clears throat> ice cubes. I think that that is a really interesting idea. I've never actually used just straight espresso for ice cubes. Mm. Um, but I think that that could be something really cool to play with. Also, okay. just want to throw out this thought of like there is a instant product being made that is a frozen flash brew, and they're taking those and yeah. using them to make hot coffee. So you can take it and put hot coffee or hot water over it, and it melts and it's a coffee. You can also melt it and then use it as um, like your espresso base in, in a latte. So something like that could be super fun in terms of just like making some things that you have on hand that you can just make coffee with, yeah. I think is a Because it's really idea. just the concentration of espresso that makes it really capable yeah. as an ingredient for this type of stuff. Totally. Yeah. The last question is about floating espresso because there is like a density thing that goes on. And the main, the main thing about layering different density liquids on top of each other is all about temperature difference. <sighs> Yeah. So even though we're like chilling these, uh, chilling the shots, we're doing that just so it's like a quick turnaround. It's not actually cold. So the drink itself that has the tonic and it also has the added density of the gin and the, um, the citrus juice, it's that, it's that temperature difference that is what creates the layering because it just like creates a little like surface when you pour it in that buoys it up. Yeah. Uh, it buoys it. <laughs> I'm going to use that. Uh, I, I like that word. It is a good one. All right. Let's okay. go to the next street. Um, let's keep, so let's while, keep rolling. while we're doing this, I also think it might be helpful for people to understand crema as an okay. agent when it comes to bitterness because yeah. I think a lot of people are afraid to let their espresso sit because they're okay. going to lose the crema, but yeah. ultimately it's just a, a byproduct of CO2, this is so, true. so like technically letting it sit out might create more balance in it an, does. as an ingredient like this. 
So espressos are always served traditionally with a spoon, and that's so you can stir it to both cool it down, but also to get rid of the bitterness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this time I'm actually going to remove this front panel because this okay. machine has that as an option, which I really love. So I can remove this cover here so that we can just kind of see what's actually going on because if I was making espresso in any way, I would have to then tamp the coffee, right? right. So we can just kind of see it happening here, Wait which is always it. just fun. Ooh, so this is cool. Perfect. So we're actually a little bit overdosed on this one now. So what's because happening, I changed the grind setting. Yeah, so what's happening here on the machine is that um, the, there's slightly too much coffee in the portafilter. And so basically the machine is not giving us the green light. It's saying, hey guys, like take a little bit out. So Matt's actually going to just take a little bit out by taking the razor tool and just like moving it around, which is going to remove a little bit from the top. And then he's going to tamp again. And we're going to get that green light. And now the machine will remember that for next time. So here's the big question of the day. Matt, were you the inspiration for the smiley face? I mean, you like tell you're, me. Like, what is the likeness here? Because I, I think it's like really close. Yeah. It's really super close. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm so glad you noticed. <laughs> while he is making that, I'm going to do something that I kind of was hoping I would never do. And that is... I'm actually going to make um, something, I'm going to cook something on, li on the live. <laughs> okay, live so wait, what, what drink are we doing now? So we're making the rum I'm espresso. completely missing here. So we'll just kind of give a little bit broad overview of this drink. It is so good. It is exactly what it sounds like. It's a milkshake that utilizes coconut sorbet. We're going to put a little bit of rum in it espresso, and we're going to top it with toasted coconut flakes, which is what I'm going to do right now. Um, if you're like me, um, I'm not saying I'm not a great chef, um, but I am saying that I kind of just <laughs> struggle to get things right sometimes. This is something that's really so super humble. fun. <laughs> just real, realistic. <laughs> um, this is something that's really super fun to do, and especially in a moment where you have guests and you're making this for them. This is really great to just toast the coconut uh, flakes for the top of the drink. It, so it has good. an incredible aroma and it just has a really great vibe going on. So basically I've just got a pan with a little touch of olive oil in it on medium heat. I'm gonna put my coconut flakes in and I'm basically just gonna stir them around. It takes about four to five minutes for this to, to happen and I'm just wanting them to caramelize a little bit. That's gonna release um, a really great aromatic. It's going to bring the sugars in the coconut itself up to the top. It's going to create a nice crunch and mm. also a beautiful color variation to put on top of the drink. Love that. All right. So while this is kind of making, I'm going to also start building the drink. So the first part of the drink that I'm going to do is the coconut sorbet. So I'm going to put this in here. So I also just want to take a moment to, to mention why I'm using coconut sorbet and also to tell you to not stress about it. So I'm a really big fan of utilizing products that are delicious, tasty, but that also are super friendly to folks that may have allergies or specific sort of preferences when it comes to, comes to dairy. Yeah. So in a former like barista life, there was totally this moment that was just like, if you couldn't drink milk, you were just kind of out of luck. This yeah. is years ago, and there right? There was like an inconvenience. It really felt like it was like, oh shoot, you can't, you can't do dairy. We'll try to figure it out. Yeah. And I'm what sure I have love, a second best option for you. What I love about the industry now is that there's so many really super cool products out there that address this, but that also are really tasty. Yeah, like um, very intentional. It's really great. And at Onyx, we like regularly work on incorporating drinks into our menus that, that don't also come with substitutions, but actually just come with an alternative plant-based product that's really, really good. That we're, yeah. That's just how the, the drink is made. I love that. And this particular drink is made in that spirit. Cool. So it's coconut sorbet. I'm going to put a little bit of coconut milk in it. 
Um, and the whole goal with that is just to create a really incredible drink that everyone hopefully will enjoy, um, but also that is friendly to anybody that might need to not have dairy. Yeah. Um, but all that to say just that like, if you're out there and you're like, I can't find coconut sorbet, um, don't worry about it. Just you, you can use like an oat, you could use, um, you can actually just use ice cream, like use whatever you want, yeah. but I'm, I'm pretty into it. Yeah. Um, so I think it smells so good. <laughs> really positive alternatives to the coconut are just vanilla ice cream. Mm. You can get oat ice cream. Um, there's even like avocado style co sorbet ice yeah. creams out there. Um, and so you can just choose something like that. You can use the same drink build and you're, I think you're going to have a lot of success. Yeah. But the coconut does like texturally speaking, really make a big difference. Also, I did it without burning the studio uh -huh. down. We're I all just, really grateful for thanks. that. Thanks, yeah, I, I knew you'd be proud of me. <laughs> um, so the spirit for this particular drink is rum. And the purpose of that is this particular rum just has a lot of really great molasses-like sweetness. It also has a lot of interesting spices going on to it. There's a little bit of clove happening, which is great. Yeah. Um, and so it kind of gives it like a little bit more of a holiday spirit to it. I think a lot of times coconut, um, we, when you think about a coconut cocktail, you think about something like um, like a pina colada, right? And which is which is a really great cocktail. But for me, I wanted to, especially when you start putting espresso in, you really want to like capitalize on the like the spices and the things that are available. Yeah. All right. So I've got my one ounce of rum in, and I, I was telling Matt yesterday that I worked a party recently where I make, made a whole bunch of coffee cocktails and people kept being like, we want more booze in the drink. And I'm always like lighter on, a little bit lighter on the booze side because I feel like it's easy to just add a little bit more. It's really <laughs> hard, to, you can't take it away once it's in there. It's true. All right, so for the espresso rum shake, we've got the rum, we've got the espresso, we've got the coconut. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit of coconut milk in there, about two or three ounces, because I wanna make sure that the drink is not just straight ice cream, because yeah. that makes it that makes Also it into the drinking experience. Yeah. Okay, are we ready? So here we ready. Go. Okay, I see we have a few questions here. Um, yeah. So one question is about sweetened or unsweetened coconut. I used unsweetened coconut flakes here. Oh man. That's so great. It's already ready. It's like <laughs> one, Easy. Um, it's just one, it's a one shot pony right here. Yep. Matt, I have a really important question. What's that? Somebody wants to know what your hair care routine is. That's a critical question. It's like kind of a big deal. <laughs> Will you share it with us? Uh, <laughs> hmm, let's see. So typically, uh, just hoping for the best, really. Uh, I, I, I wish I could tell you that I had a really specific routine, but uh, I don't. I cut my own hair, and I've been doing it for 15 years. So You cut your own hair? I cut my own hair. How? I mean, do you have to look in a mirror? Very carefully. Do you have to look in a mirror to see the back? Well, so it all started because in high school I shaved my head. And so obviously I did that myself because that was easy. And as it started growing back, I challenged myself with trying to do something different. And it didn't always it. look good, that's for sure. <laughs> I bet it looked better than you think it did. Look at your volume control here. That was like the perfect amount. Thanks. Okay, so the final touch is just that I'm going to like basically stack a whole bunch of these coconut flakes in the drink. And so, do you hear that? I hope that's everyone else can hear that, because that's so nice. <laughs> Ooh, hot dog. Mm -hmm. So if you're, I did make a bunch of coconut, and so it's just sometimes people are like, that's too much for me to make. If you want to make a bunch, you can like keep it for a few days if you think you're going to make some of these. Because I know all of you are out there thinking, how can I have a coconut shake literally every single day? <laughs> you can. You can. And you should. And you should. <laughs> all right. There it is. So fun. 
And then kind of the final step is some of this like coconut build is going to make it challenging to eat <laughs> or drink. Good. <laughs> right. And so straw, you can do a spoon, kind of like whatever your vibe is, but we're going to do the straw for today. Yes. I mean, come on. Yay, the so straw's excited. pointing towards me, and I'm going to take that as a sign. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we have a question from Sammy. Why is That's Andrea so, so amazing? That's the question. Everyone needs to know the answer to that. Sammy, hi. It's the, so good to see enigma. you. The <laughs> enigma. No, it's, it's, you know what? It's because I'm surrounded by great people that are encouraging me. Oh, my gosh. It's nice. You're easy to love and encourage, Andrea. <laughs> that's really sweet. Okay, so that's the drink. Um, I also I just so want to leave a final, a couple final notes about this drink to also just encourage you to play around with the recipe. And I think for me, that's one of the things I really love about creating drink builds is that it really is the ingredient should be, the ingredient recipe list should just be your starting point for creating drinks that you want. So yeah. it's great. It's a great place to look for, um, like for portions, for like just in actual ingredients, the ounces, like all of that kind of stuff. But you should take this particular recipe and you should like just go make it your own. <laughs> go forth. I'm a this big is fan. a this is a perfect template for. I mean, if you like coffee ice cream, <laughs> it's like really good. Was it good? It's so good. Okay. <laughs> it's so good. Really and, and really, I'm looking forward to drinking the entire thing and then just shoveling the coconut flakes into my mouth. That's so cool. And probably missing and having <laughs> it in my beard, but it's fine. I want to see that <laughs> It'll be later. worth it. All right, let's answer a few questions and then we'll move to the last drink. Yeah. So someone's just asking if there is a suggestion for a similar drink, but with something other than coconut. So just keep in mind that the coconut... For me, I love coconut and I yeah. like the way it looks and smells and all of the things. And so that's why we built it with coconut. But you can use any ice cream. You can substitute things in there. So I would just suggest vanilla ice cream or oat ice cream is really great as well. So just yeah. one of those two, you can actually just straight sub it in. And then for the top, you can always garnish. Um, with all, I mean, honestly, you could garnish with whipped cream is super fun. Oh, yeah. You can like make a cold shake and foam that would be really fun. If you're interested there in that, go. I've got other recipes out there for that. Um, yeah. All right. Let's I'm going to go, go ahead and get these shots going for you, you so they can get down to temp. Let's like take a look at some of these other questions. All right. Charles is asking, can you cold brew with other liquids besides water? Ooh. Now we're thinking. What a question. The answer is yes, but the subtext is that I think it's better to make a cold brew and then combine it as a concentrate into a into whatever other liquid you're thinking about using. Yeah. Because coffee is soluble, but only so much as the liquid it's being dissolved into wants to accept it. So exactly. This this is actually one of the reasons why you see. Um, recipes for what recommending like filtered water and things like that is whatever the water has in it particle wise is going to inhibit how much coffee can go into the actual water and become soluble and turn into a beverage. So just as an example, if you did something, I'm just going to throw this out there. Um, but if you're like, oh, I want to do like a coffee orange juice, which mm. is kind of a trend that was happening a little bit during the summer. Um, you know, great. I'm just going to take my coffee grounds and put orange juice in it. The juice is like really super full of sugars, fibers, uh, citric acid. There's mm -hmm. not much room for the coffee to go into it. Right. So I think that you're kind of better off doing a cold brew and then putting it with something else as opposed to brewing it that way. Yeah. It's um, really good. I mean, we could. there's a lot of rabbit holes there too, but when it comes to like softness and hardness of water, that's I always try to tell people that true. water can either be very full or very thirsty. <laughs> and depending I on what's already that. in there, and it's similar with yeah, I using love the way you're saying that. using another product limits its acceptance of coffee. And yeah, so you, using just a really good water is always kind of the best bet because you're you're throwing a whole nother variable in there, and there's already just so much to consider. So, all right, lots lots more questions. So, 
I I don't want to like totally mm. pull this card out, but it's time for our rematch. Yep, it is, and we all know what that means. So in the first class we did together, we played rock paper scissors. I won. Mm. Matt threw scissors. Luck. I think he might throw scissors again. I didn't throw scissors last time. You're wrong about that. I think he's gonna throw scissors. So we're just gonna do one. <laughs> and we're gonna do it. All right, ready? Yep. One, two, three, throw. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Ready? There's only okay. one way to do it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Right? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, we're one to one. It's fine. This it's, is fine. It's better than fine. This is Everything's fine. just how it was originally supposed to be. <laughs> okay, we're even. Yep. All right, let's go to the final drink, which is called Onyx Tonight. So this is a play on this really great drink that we have at Onyx called the Onyx Delight. And that drink is just basically a latte that's made with honey, cinnamon, and vanilla. All the best things. And when I was playing around with coffee cocktails, I was like, golly, it'd just be really nice to like put some whiskey or some bourbon with the Onyx Delight syrup and a little coffee and just see what yeah. happens. Because remember, when you're making coffee go into any cocktail, you really do need that bridge between the spirit and the coffee. So it typically looks like a sweetness of some kind. And so basically this drink is super straightforward and it builds on two different things. First is the flavor profile of this bourbon that we're using. So this is just a maker's mark and you've kind of seen throughout, I'm just trying to use kind of like standard spirits where there's Easy nothing super fancy yeah. going on here. Um, and so basically this particular, um, Bourbon has like some caramel going on in it. Actually a little bit of orange and honey as yeah. well, which is really interesting, kind of more in the aromatics. So kind of what I was wanting to do is take that and just sort of elevate it a little bit in the aromatic experience to turn Perfect. it more into a drink. Yeah. So and we're using the same coffee for all three of these. Same coffee. Which is super cool. For all three. We're just pulling out different parts of it. Just pulling out different parts. Yeah. yeah. No, and I think I think that's great. And and again, this particular coffee does not have a super high level of, of bitterness in it yeah. at all. It's really sweet. It's got that berry fruitiness. It's got the honeysuckle aromatics. Mm -hmm. Like the coffee, this coffee is really great um, just to drink on its own, but also in all of these drinks, which is great. Yeah. Okay, so let's build the drink. We are gonna start with a three quarter ounce of the Onyx Delight syrup. And this particular syrup is literally just honey, cinnamon, and vanilla. So it's all the things that make us feel warm and fuzzy, and we <laughs> love it. Oh, I mean, seasonally speaking, this is such a good beverage right now. So I, I like was, after we tasted it some yesterday, I went back to the hotel and was like, what does this taste like? I, I really feel like it's just like the big red gum but you're drinking, you're like chewing the big red gum kind of <laughs> like by a fire yeah, oh, in the fall right. and you just want a little like warm. You can't have one without the other. It's so great. As soon it's as really you great. say that big red, I'm immediately back in high school and I can, I can taste it so vividly. I love it. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna add the bourbon in. Again, I'm just doing an ounce. I'm pretty, I'm pretty like dialed back in that way. Mm-hmm. All right, we're gonna put in, oh, will you grab that? I'm yep, I gotcha. Go crazy. We're gonna put two shots of espresso in this. I feel like this is like the most like coffee forward um, drink that we've made. Which, that's also kind of cool. Over all three beverages, there's different levels of booziness, sweetness, and coffee. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so this is more, this is definitely more of a drink, a cocktail that you would just kind of sip on. Um, okay, so I've got the base of the drink here and I'm just kind of mixing it up in this other glass um, just because I want to get it all nice and, and together there before I put it with the, um, on the ice. And I am, I'm going to go ahead and put an ounce of water in it. <clears throat> Excuse me, yeah. guys. Um, because this particular drink is just super strong like, I want it to just be more of a drink and less of like just Smack in your in face. face. Yeah. yeah. Just as a reminder too, we haven't had anyone come on the screen yet. 
That's true. Don't forget, you if to. you raise your hand on Zoom, we will bring you on. And we want to see your face because it's, pretty it's fun. unfair <laughs> that you get to see our face and we don't get to see yours. Now, this is, I mean, honestly, we do this because we want to connect with folks and yeah. like teach you about coffee and just have discussions. And mm -hmm. I, think, I think for me that there is a really big group of folks out there that really want to use coffee in all kinds of different styles of yes. drinks and different situations. But it can be really hard to break out of the... Um, like you love lattes. It's true. Process. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? It that is true. Um, but I will say that like coffee is so great in so many different styles exactly. of beverage that it's a, it'd be a crying shame to not to not <laughs> explore these things. It's true. Okay, so we've got another reappearance of the most beautiful ice that's ever that I've ever seen in my life, <laughs> and I'm basically just gonna pour this over. Just commit. Yeah, I know. It's like <laughs> you're just really gonna, quiet. You're yeah. just going to have to commit. Uh, we have a bunch of questions here, too. Um, so one of them, Marta, great question. So about dose, you know, anywhere between like 17 to 22 grams, even though it's a relatively big range, is all going to create a decent recipe for a shot of espresso. Uh, so again, try to just stay within that range and only worry about your grind size in order to produce. When you talk about proper pressure, you're probably talking about back pressure, which is different from the pressure being created by the pump. So if you restrict the water flow by making your coffee grinds more small, being more fine, you'll create more back pressure. Yep. Because um, if you have 20 grams, that's definitely enough coffee. <laughs> yeah, that should be plenty. Yeah. All right. Let's go back to the task at hand. And so now the drink is essentially finished. And But what I want to do is I really want to bring out the orange aromatic that exists already in the bourbon. Mm. Um, and also, I think, just helps tie the drink together. Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to express this orange over it, which basically just means that like I'm going to squeeze just a little bit of the oil essence out. This is just basically completely for aromatics. So you can see here on the screen that look at all of this oil that has come out of this, I which is like, smell that. it smells incredible. It's the best. Um, and then I've got these nice little garnishes here just to like add a little pop of color and we're done. Yeah. It's a great drink. It um, is. And I'm, even though it is just brown, it still looks pretty because it kind of, I feel like it kind of fits as far as being like more of like the Manhattan type of I feel approach like to a drink. This build and this color I've seen like quite a bit as just like a cocktail and they are yes. like darker colored. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I also just want to point out a couple of things like all of the, this entire drink has been intentionally cultivated to look nice. So yeah. the glass looks nice, the ice looks nice, the beverage is brown, you got a little pop of orange on the top. Um, I think you could actually do some interesting things with this, like yeah. put a little twig of rosemary on, which Ooh. would be like just kind of a different vibe, but yeah. you could always like play with the color and play with the texture of the garnish that you have on this drink. The garnish can go a long way. Guess what? We've got a live guest. Yes! Angie! Angie Fisher! Come on, let's, see. let's hear it. Hi. Hey. How are you? I just want to say I appreciate these classes. The the drink concoctions are so unique. Um, Thank you. I still make that strawberry cappuccino, um, that campfire Love s'mores, that. even that matcha with the blue spirulina coconut. That Aww. was amazing. Aww. That's awesome. So my you, question Angie. is, um, actually, it was stemming from that. Um, first drink, I noticed you made a double shot. Mm -hmm. However, you mm -hmm. only used half of a single shot. Ooh, yeah. Would you ever use or brew a ristretto shot instead? Yeah. And would that affect like the viscosity, the flavor, mm -hmm. etc.? Mm -hmm. This is a really good question. So basically, I only ever make one style of espresso. So I basically hone in on a recipe for a particular coffee, and then I usually make it like within a little bit of a window over time. Yeah. So geometry, you might end up needing a little bit finer sometimes, or you might want to pull a slightly less volume to emphasize acidity or 
right. sweetness or something like that. Um, but I'm still just looking for that balance of espresso shot. And then I will, which I just did, take just part of it and use it yeah. and maybe drink the other shot. So she's asking about ristretto shot, which, which is, is basically a smaller volume of shot. It's more concentrated. Angie, you're right. The viscosity is higher. Yeah. Everything about it is just like amped up. Yeah. And so it would change a lot of the way that the drink tastes. So for me, I would just say that in this situation, I wouldn't do that. But I also just want to say, if you like a, the ristretto shot, you should use right. that. That's the thing. If, yeah, If absolutely. you would drink it by itself that way, then yeah. I don't see why not. Yeah. But we are just trying to find that sweet spot for a coffee mm -hmm. and just make our lives easier yeah. <laughs> by not having to adjust it a whole lot. Yeah. So find what tastes really good to you and use that as your base. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you drink ristrettos? Is that kind of your thing? Or are you just thinking like you hate having that additional shot that's just kind of hanging mm. there? Feels like waste, maybe. What about you, Angie? How do you how do you feel about ristrettos? Is that kind of your jam? Do you normally go for ristrettos? Oh, we can't hear her anymore. Bummer. Sorry, I was uh, oh, there we go. not allowed to unmute. But um, no, I was just thinking it might have been a, a a better way to just make mm. the exact amount for the recipe. Yeah, totally. no, that makes sense, and I think. I, I do agree with you in that. I mean, I do feel like having an additional shot is kind of, it's like, it's kind of a lot going on. Um, I think one of the other things to just keep in mind is like, as you, anything you change with it is going to change what you want to do with your grind size too. So it's like making different styles of shot across the spectrum becomes really challenging. Yeah. And I also yeah. like to remind people, like, don't think about it in terms of waste because you're using the same amount of coffee regardless. So the way that we're approaching it is just yeah. creating more balance. And inherently, that means we have more volume left over, whether we use it or not. Same amount of coffee was yep. used. So don't feel guilty about that. You're just aiming for a certain mm. flavor profile. That's a good point. Yeah. Awesome. Angie, thank you. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, thanks for coming on, Love Angie. It. Love Great it. to see your face. Yeah. All right, we've got some more really great questions. So Myra is asking if we have any hot espresso coffee recipes. So. Um, Maybe this, a few? Yeah, so this actual drink could be done hot. Oh, we so, did that. Yeah, so I put, version. yeah, I put an ice cube in it, but you actually could do it hot. And what you would do is prep the drink. So you would do your onyx light syrup, hot water. Yeah. The maker's mark or bourbon or whatever you want to use. And then um, pull your espresso and put it on there and it's hot. Yeah, which would be yeah. referred to as a toddy. Just so it's everyone a hot knows. Toddy. Yeah, Thank a, you. a toddy would just be a hot cocktail and yeah, it's delicious. I, I have Especially a drink. With the spices. Yeah. So the, I made a drink in the last um, time that we had together that we love to call the FOMO. It's the world's most. Um, See, that's what I thought you were going for. Yeah, it's, it's the world's so most good. Um, <laughs> delicious, but also versatile drink. So that has a hot base and then a cold shaken foam on the top. You mm. can put in any of those FOMO recipes, you can put rum in and it's really great. Yes. I also just did one. Um, I like, I'm just really excited about this particular drink, but I just did one that's made with tea. Ooh. So it's a tea FOMO and it has espresso and it has botanical Wait, gin. tea and espresso. It has tea and espresso. What kind of tea? Um, white moonlight oh, tea. Oh, so a really nice delicate tea. Super delicate tea. Cool. It's got the foam on the top, and then it has a squirt, or like a spritz. <laughs> squirt, a spritz, <laughs> a spritz of tea across the top, which has this incredible oh, floral. Yes. And then I cover the whole thing with powdered sugar, so it's just this like white matte shellac. It's, <laughs> wow. It's amazing. It it's sounds really so good. good. Maybe we'll do that on here at, at some point. We should. All right, so Lucia is asking for a good substitute for non-alcoholic drinkers. For So for, for this, this particular drink, I think you would just make it as as is and just pull out the pull out the bourbon. And you can do it hot or cold. Yeah, um, just maybe yes, add more absolutely. water? Add a little more water, like to taste. Um, and this, this would work for that as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's syrup. It's a pretty simple syrup, <laughs> no pun intended, 
but it's so good. Like it alone adds the perfect flavor to pair with espresso. It's really good. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So we're kind of coming a little bit towards the end of our time here. So I'd love Bummer. to just see or hear any more questions. Um, but I think maybe we don't have time. That's you know, I think there's some other business we need to take care of. And then if we have more time, we'll answer as many questions as possible. Good idea. All right, there's two, there's two uh, orders of business. The first one is that we want to take a group photo. Yeah. So what we want you to do if you are in the on place Zoom. to do it is to turn your camera on and we're going to just make a fun little grid and like just take a little snapshot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So go ahead and turn your Zoom cameras on now and we're going to take a group photo. Yeah. Um, we highly encourage photo bombs of pets yes. or anything like that we're Exotic like super animal. into. So go ahead and Babies. turn on your Zoom yep. and we're going to take a picture. Bonus points if you have a beverage that you made with us. If you're drinking a beverage, put that on. Okay. Oh, look Yay! at all these folks. Hey, everyone. What's up, y'all? Thank you so much for joining us. We'll just give it another second and let everybody get on or everybody that wants to. Oh, I see somebody. Quincy, you've got the drink. And Kate. Oh my yeah. gosh. Oh, I see a dog. Sunday, I, I see I, a baby. <laughs> Quincy has Quincy, a dog and oh, the with drink. The, with the what a champion. And the drink. Yes. I love it. All right, ready? Three, two, one. Amazing. Thank you so <laughs> much. Okay, and then the last, but that's certainly not least, and the most important moment is we're going to give away this machine. And you're going to love it. I cannot wait for you to have oh this my experience. Gosh. All right, we have the winner. I'm just gonna give a second. Build the suspense. All right, Matt. Pop you're the bottles, ready. and the winner is Anna Woo! or Anna, depending on how you pronounce it. Hey, Congratulations! Oh my gosh. Woo! And they have a dog. Yes. I love it. I, I, I hope that the dog is going crazy right now. Congratulations. <laughs> do y'all have an espresso machine already? I do. He does it. Beautiful. Perfect. That is so great. Congratulations. You're going to enjoy this machine. It's so, so great. I love using it. Thank you so much for joining us. We're just happy to connect you with the machine, and it's going to be so much fun. Yeah. Thanks for joining <laughs> us today. All of the drinks. Yeah, we, he loved all the drinks. And the coconut plates. Hey, the puppy chinos. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my gosh, I love it. That's so cool. Thank you. Well, congrats. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> all right, so we're going to like tie up our time today. And so I just want to like throw out a big thank you to Crate and Barrel yes. and Breville for making this series possible. And thank you to Andrea for being here and hosting this awesome class Absolutely. and sharing all of your thoughts yeah, and all so the experience that you have and bring to this. Thank really, you. Really, really grateful. Thanks. It's really yeah. fun. I love doing these things. So if you made the drinks at home or you're going to make them later, you've got some photos, please tag yes. all the social things. So at Breville, at Crate and Barrel, and at Onyx Coffee Lab would love to get tagged by you all. Um, and we really hope to see you next time. So we're doing another class in December and it's going to be super holiday focused. It's going to be amazing. We're going to do some really fun things with coffee Ooh, then. I can't and wait. Yeah, we have to see you then. Thank you all so much.